Hey, what's up, guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. I do the premium league code problems on my Patreon. And uh, reach out to me on Discord or something if you want to contact me. I try to respond to everyone. This problem is problem 238, product of array except self. And this is a very popular interview problem. I see this one all the time. Uh, I like this problem a lot. It's also on a few other websites. Uh, basically, it is given an array of nums um, of n integers where n is greater than 1. So we have a bunch of integers, um, you know, like this is an example of an input we might get. Just an array of integers, regular. Return an output such that output of i is equal to the product of all the elements except nums of i. Okay, so that means the output array at each index is going to be the product of all of the other elements in the array except for the current element. So if you look at this example, we have this uh, one. So we would want the output array for the zeroth index to contain the multiplication of all of the other elements besides this current element we're looking at, right? So for one, it would be two times three times four, which is 24. For two, it would be one times three times four, which is 12. And for 3, it would be 1 times 2 times 4, which is 8. And for 4, it would be 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6. So that's the output we want to uh, return. And, um, you know, how do we solve this? When we look at this problem, it seems like, it seems like the intuitive way to do this is, okay, well, what if I just loop through this and I calculate the product and then I loop through it again? You know, you go through this, you calculate the product, and then you loop through it again. So the product is just 24 altogether, because 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is 24. And then you go through again, so that would be your first loop, go through, get the product, and then the next loop just divide by the current element to get the right spot, right? 24 divided by 1, 24, 24 divided by 2, 12, 24 divided by 3, 8, 24 divided by 4, 6. And um, that is a way to do it, but look at this. This is what they'll say in the interview. Solve it without division. So that makes you think a little bit more. That's like, how the heck do we do this then? How the hell are we going to you know, figure this out if we can't use division? That's That was like the easy approach. But there is, uh, there is a way to do it, and it's not too difficult if you really think about it. So if you're looping through this and we can't use division, then how are we going to be able to know, like at the current element, what the product of everything is going to be after it? Uh, that's pretty much impossible, but unless we loop backwards, then we would know. Oh, wait. So what if we loop forward? We're going forward. And, you know, once you're here, if you're at two, you know of everything before it. You know that there's a one before it. When you're at three, you know there's a two and a one before it. You know that four, when you're at four, you know all the elements before it. You know the products. So you can actually calculate that. And if you go backwards, you know the products of it, you know, all the products before one. So that's the idea. You're going to calculate all of the products before and you're going to calculate all the you're going to loop forward and then you're going to loop backwards and you're going to calculate all of those products and then you're going to multiply those together um, they have a really cool example of how to do this in the the solution for this is actually amazing um, documentation wise so let's look at the example what we want to do is this is our input array right four five one eight two we're going to see okay four we're going to calculate, okay, anything, whatever is before 4, and when we're going from left to right, is just going to be 1, right? So we'll just say, okay, 1 is before 4. Then we're going to go um, to the, when we're at 5, we're going to say, okay, 1 times 4. That's that's everything before 5. Okay, so the output is 4. Everything to the left of 4. Uh, 5 is 4. Everything to the left of 1 is 20, because 4 times 5 is 20. Everything to the left of 8 is 20, because 4 times 5 times 1 is 20. Everything to the left of 2 is 4 times 5 times 8 times 1, 160. So that is all of the elements to the left. Then we go to the right. Okay, 2 times 1, anything to the right of 2 is just 1. Anything to the right of 8 is 2. Anything to the right of 1 is 8 times 2, 16. Anything to the right of 5 is 1 times 8 times 2, 16. Anything to the right of 4 is 5 times 1 times 8 times 2, which is 80. So 
Now we have these two different output arrays here, right? We have these are all the products to going to the, you know, a regular for loop from the beginning to the end, and this is from the end to the beginning. Now what you want to do is you just want to go through and multiply these together. So the final answer will be 160 times 1, 20 times 2, 20 times 16, 4 times 16, and 1 by 80. And that's exactly how you do it. I think it isn't much clearer than that. Um, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's the solution here. That's all you do it. Um, to understand that, like I said at the beginning, you just know that everything to the right is going to be... Um, multiplied by everything to the left. There is nothing to the left. There is everything to the right when you're trying to calculate for 1. So you get 2 times 3 times 4. There is nothing to the uh, right, but there's everything to the left. So you get 1 times 2 times 3 for 4's output, which is 6. And then just for a case like this, it's just, you know, whatever's to the left times everything to the right. And then for a case like this, it's whatever's to the left times everything to the right. So it's just whatever to the left times everything to the right is going to be what we want. So there's um, two ways to solve this. Uh, we could have uh, a solution with space. So let's do it like this so it's really easy for you guys to understand. So let's get the length of the array. Um, Nums.length. So n is going to be equal to the length of the array. And let's get some arrays for ourselves, right? Like we were just talking about. So we'll say left products is equal to new int of size n. And then we'll make another array called right products. And it's going to be equal to new in array of size n. And then we're going to have our output array as well. And this is going to be our final array for outputs. The left products is going to contain everything to every, uh, the product of all the numbers to the left of the current number, like we saw in the solution. For example, for 1, it's just going to contain uh, 1 because there's nothing to the left. 2 is going to contain 1 because there's not only 1 to the left. 3 is going to contain 2 times 1 because it's just 2 times 1. You know what I mean? So left is going to contain everything to the left of the current number. Right is going to contain everything to the right of the current number. And then we multiply those together and put them into our output array. So that's what we're going to do here. We start off by saying left products of 0, the first element, because if you're starting at the first element, there's nothing to the left except for the value 1. Um, so we're going to do that. And for right products, there's nothing to the right of the last element. So we're going to make that one as well. Um, now we just have to loop from index 1 onwards. And because we want to start at index 1, because there's actually something to the left now. So we start at index 1. We loop up. We loop to the end of the array. And we'll say, okay, left products of i is equal to the number before times the left products before. This gets the product up into that point, and this adds the number before. This multiplies by the number right before, which is exactly what we want to do. Because um, left products uh, will keep this, the, you know, the multiplication of the um, last v value that we were looking at. For example, we want to, um, when we're looking at, you know, 5, for example, left products of i minus 1, if we're starting at this position, would be left products of 0, which is 1. And then we want to multiply it by nums of i minus 1, which is 4. So 1 times 4 gives us 4. We put that into the left output array, and we keep doing that to multiply the uh, correct values for the products to the left of the current number. Let me know if you have any questions about that. I think I explained it well enough. Um, in this case, we want to start at the second last element so that there's stuff to the right. Uh, we want to go down to zero and decrement i, and it's going to be very similar, except in this case, we're going to do its right products we're calculating, and we're going to do nums of i plus one to get the current element to the right that we want to multiply by the product up into that point on the right side. This contains the product up into the point without this number, so then we multiply the number, and then this, you know, the next, we keep going. That's exactly how it works. After we have all the values for our left and right products calculated, we just do one for loop up into the length of the output array, and we calculate the individual values of our output array by just doing left products of i, 
times right products to the i. Everything to the left, every product of all the numbers to the left, every product of all the numbers to the right. I explained that a few times, and that's all you have to do. It's pretty straightforward. Um, cannot find symbol right products. Sorry, with an S. My bad. Always making mistakes. Sorry. And uh, right products with an S again. Come on. There we go. So there you go. That's a working solution. Okay, so we have this working solution now. And it's a good solution, like, for sure. But... Let's look at what it says right here. Follow up. Could you solve this with constant space complexity? The output array does not count as extra space for the purpose of sp uh, space complexity analysis. Okay. So they're not counting this output array in the space because that's just what we have to return. And they usually don't count that in uh, technical interviews. But we do have these two extra arrays here. And we actually don't need these. So to, do, to get rid of these, what we can actually do is we can make output array hold the values from either the left or the right, the product values for all the products of all the numbers to the left of the current element or to the right of the current element up to the current element. And then, so we could do it from one direction only. And then for the other direction, we can use a variable to calculate the product, an ongoing variable product uh, up to that current number. So... Um, let's do it to the left. Let's, let's, let's delete the right products array and replace the left products array with our output array. So the output array in this case is now calculating all of the values for the product of all the, um, numbers up to the current element, right? From the left. So that's what it's doing right here. Now, for two, from the right, what we'll actually do is we don't even need this. We're not going to be using right and left um, arrays anymore. We're going to be going from the right. We're going to make a variable to handle all of the products of all the elements from the right up to the current element. So we'll set it to 1 at first. We'll start from the very last element this time. And the output array after this loop is, we just replaced it from the left products array. So it contains all of the left products up to that point. So if you look at the solution, the output array after looping through this loop on this input would just look like this, right? So this is what the output array looks like after this loop. Um, we calculate all of them up to the left. Now the right, we're going to use a variable to keep track and multiply against these left values like we did in the right products array. We had this right products array where we're um, doing multiplication, but this time we're just going to use a variable and keep multiplying the variable to make it bigger. You know what I mean? So um, that's the strategy here. We're just going to say output array is equal to output array of i. So whatever is in the output array, which is the... Um, the left product at that point times the variable. So we're just going to multiply it by our variable. And at first the variable is just one, which is perfect because the left product, the last element, is already set up and there's nothing to the right. And then you want to keep multiplying your product variable with um, r is going to be equal to r times nums of i. So R will keep multiplying by the current element and keep getting bigger. It'll be all of the products of the right, the elements to the right of the current element. And that's exactly what we want to multiply by the uh, particular index in the left products array, which we use our output array to handle. And that's it. Yeah, that's that takes it down to constant space. If you weren't going to count the output array as space, makes it a lot better, less um, arrays. But I did want to show you guys the... Um, solution that had those two extra arrays first so you could understand how easy it is to change it and where it came from. So that's about it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions about this. I know it's a little bit tricky. I tried to explain it as well as I could and I think I did a pretty good job. So uh, just let me know if you have any questions. You can reach out to me and uh, I'll explain as much as I can. Um, but I think it's pretty straightforward. I like this problem a lot. Um, and I think this, I've been asked this in an interview. So it's a great problem to get good at. I appreciate all you guys for watching these videos. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.